Liverno Solar Light Strip, one of Lidl's brands, and a fetching pair of work gloves. The reason I'm wearing the work gloves is because, a little touch of eczema in the hands, I thought I'd shield the queasy from the sight of that. Others getting better now, and I want to give a shout out to Dr. Schofield um, at the McKenzie Medical Centre in Embra. It's a medical centre that also doubles up as an educational establishment, by the look of it, for sorting me out with some steroid cream, <laughs> betnamethasone. And uh, antibiotics, just uh, as a precaution, because uh, things were getting a bit out of control. It's been very hot here. I do not deal with the heat very well. So, moving on. Laverna Lux Solar Light Strip. It's got this lovely picture in the front of the illuminated strip, and it's solar powered, and you can stick it under your furniture like this, and and it doesn't actually look like that. No, it's not going to be that bright. That is a gross exaggeration for marketing purposes. Let's pop the lid on the box. Get it out and see what you get for your money. So here's a strip and it's a very classic arrangement. Oh, what's these for? What's the rubber bands for? Not sure what the rubber bands are for. Maybe I should read the instructions. So the strip itself is the classic. It's this a metalised anti-staff bag. It's got our standard sort of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder type arrangement and it's got the strip. The strip has... Each LED is in a cuttable position, I would say about oh, three quarters of an inch, 20 millimetres between LEDs. And it comes with a little waterproof connector to go onto the uh, solar panel. The solar array, if I peel this off, instantly loses points. I mean, it's a nice, big, generous array. Just flip that over there. But it loses points the fact that the uh, it's the silicon solar panels have been laid into what looks like a plastic trough and then flooded over with resin. And my problem with that is that some of them, uh, some of the solar panels made like this, the difference in thermal coefficient of expansion between the silicon or the plastic and the resin results in a slight flexing under extreme weather conditions, you know, extreme heat conditions, and it can actually crack the solar panels. Maybe that's not the case with this one. Let's plug it together, because this should theoretically have a charge in it. We shall open it up and see. I don't even know what battery is in this. I have not had this open. So let's bring this in, turn it face down. It's got two buttons, on off. And from that, that's it on, by the way. And then mode. And from the fact that it's, uh, it's one of these two channel things, it means that it's using that sort of polarity reversal to actually light, light alternate LEDs. So it means that when you actually turn it around to the continuous on, where's that? It's got lots of patterns, lots of useless Christmas light patterns. It'll actually have a bit dimmer because it's alternating 50-50 ratio between the two circuits at very high speed. It's not being picked up in the camera, the positive modulation, the, the polarity reversal, which would be 50-50 positive modulation. So that's uh, quite good. Let's open this. That's what we want. So. On off, is that a click on, click off, or is it just a moment traction switch and little microcontroller perhaps? Let's flip this off. It looks uh, so similar to the sort of Christmas lighting circuits, it may be based on a Christmas lighting controller, which is a bit odd, but I suppose it's the cheapest way to do it. I like the fact that it does have a large area of silicon on this. The gloves, incidentally, will not be needed for very long, given the rate at which my hands are just re returning to their former glory. As I say, I'm not very good with heat, and we had one of the hottest loads in load-ins at the beginning of this job, and it's just left me a bit there. Okay. It's got a nickel metal hydride, uh, 1000 milliamp hour. It's a generous enough rating, so it's boosting the voltage up. That means, well, it's only got the four sections. Each of them put, puts out half a volt, so that's the to allow for the uh, voltage of this when it's being charged via a diode and the diode drop itself. It's kind of annoying that the circuit board is kind of glued in and heat staked in. So let's uh, bust it out and see what's on the other side. Right. What do we have here? Oh, that's interesting. We've got the charging diode. I'll tell you what, I'll get close to this. Actually, I'll go and take a closer look at it and see what we can find before I get close to it and see if I can find out what these chips are. One moment, please. 
I'm not at my usual workspace, so um, I found it really difficult to read the number on this chip here, but by deducing the function of each chip, I've worked out what they are, so I didn't really need numbers on them. So let's start at the very beginning where the solar power from the, the pa power from the solar panel comes in here and it goes through this diode to the positive of the battery which has popped off during my investigation. It sits down here. The, the solar negative and the battery negative come together but they're actually come together in this case down on the actual case itself. Just I guess it saved a wire and it's, it seems logical enough. What that means is that even when you get this turned off it will still take a charge. There is a mechanical switch that goes between here and here, which is a click on, click off switch. And that connects the output from the 1.2 volt cell to the charge circuitry, uh, to the, not to the charge circuitry, but to the run circuitry. And this appears to be a voltage boost circuit to provide enough of voltage to the LEDs and also for the microcontroller. And it's notable that that has an enable input that is fed directly from the solar panel before the diode. It goes up here past a little filter and then to the chip and what that does is it turns on, let's say, loosely the three volt rail, um, which is used to actually power everything else. I say loosely because the voltage drops under load of LEDs and it only goes up to about 3.7 volts offload. So I'm guessing that it's just a, I would say it's a 3.3 volt regulator. I don't think it is. I think it's just a sort of fairly generic regulator. It's possible that uh, this diode may actually cap the voltage. So what actually happens when uh, this turns on is that it provides power to the microcontroller and the microcontroller has a button input for selecting the programs. It also seems to have memory, I'm guessing, for storing those programs. But this is a standard tactile click switch that just toggles an input. And other than that, there's really not a lot. There are two outputs going to this chip, which must be an H-bridge driver, which lets it drive alternate pins, positive and negative, so it can reverse polarity. And there's a one ohm resistor there, and then the output to the LEDs directly. So this tiny little bit of circuitry here is doing the H-bridge stuff that drives the LEDs uh, and alternates that polarity. And really, that's more or less it. This capacitor here is the decoupling capacitor for this chip. These uh, capacitors here are just support capacitors for that uh, boost circuit and this uh, has a little inductor in the back but it also then has the diode that then pumps up a capacitor on the other side that uh, then gives out that higher voltage. That's about all there is to say. As I say, it started off 3.7 volts uh, with no load. As soon as the LEDs came on, it capped it down to their voltage of 2.6 volts. So it must just be effectively a low current device and all the currents being pumped out into those LEDs. And that is more or less it. Not really much else to say. The fact that it's uh, got the circuitry like that, I'll just zoom out just a bit, kind of limits its uh, versatility as such. Uh, it means that you're always going to have those those two circuits. It would have been nice if it adjusted the option of just turning the LEDs on at a fairly decent brightness. Because this LED tape here, it would be nice if it was able to be run directly from DC like this sort of USB stuff. But it's the alternating priority stuff, which does allow those other effects. Anything else to say about this? It does have that decent solar panel on the back. That's quite generous. It's a, a, it's a nice amount of solar panel, said Clive, surreptitiously wiping the dust off it that must have been lying on the bench. And, uh, it you know, it looks like it's a fair large area. I would rate that in the region of 200 milliamps, maybe even a bit more in full sunlight. But um, in Scotland, it's not going to get full sunlight very often, except when it's baking us while we're trying to do the installation on certain jobs. But there we go. That's uh, That's it. It's a simple enough little unit, it's a minimum component count, and it does the job. It, it flashes these LEDs. Now, hold on, What? how many LEDs do we get with it, does it say? I'm pretty sure it did say. Uh, does it say so in the box? Hold on, let me find the box. 180 warm white LEDs, so that's 90 on each channel. So that's the 180 warm white LEDs there. So uh, there we go. As I say, it's not going to do what they're showing there unless that was a very, very, very long exposure. Um, it's not as bright as that, but for just visual accenting, it's not that bad at all. So that's the uh, Liverno uh, solar light strip. It's okay for what it does. It's just a, a neat little thing for adding extra feature to your garden.